So this is for Jennifer Twilley. Um, if you think about the fundamentals of soccer, it's it's not, you have to be able to, like someone could tell you, oh, okay, the fundamentals are breathing, movement, juggling and dribbling, but even if you have that awareness to create the games that can teach that effortlessly is another challenge. So I, when I was growing up, I went to this guy, his name is Tom Turnbull. He's a skills and kills, skills and drills soccer coach. And each practice, each training session followed a simple format. It was ball, ball skills mastery, dribbling sequences, the barrel game, which I'll demonstrate, and then 1v1 to cones. So let's work backwards from 1v1 to cones. So at, at each, right, so at four, four blocks of exercises, it was the same format. And I went there for years, we did the same thing. But even though we did the same thing, there's still variation, even in the same pattern. So usually when we played 1v1 to cones, we used small, we used a size one ball. Right, and this is important because if you use a size one ball, your players will, they're gonna get a competitive advantage. And the reason is because it's hard to manipulate a size one ball than a size five. So if you can, if your players are playing against each other and they finish with trying to knock each other's cones over, a large ball, the ones with the, the large cones that you can knock over, right? You can't use a, you can't use, you don't want to use a, a thin cone, thin to the ground. You want to have a, a nice target that they can play 1v1, 1v1 against each other. So ideally, if you could, right, if you're serious about being a coach or really enjoy it, Investing a couple bucks, or right? let's say you got 12 players, six six balls, so that they can play one v one. You got 20 players, that's 10 balls. So right, just do the math. If you think about the barrel game, right? So this is the third thing in the, in the process. And four barrel game is you have each player have a ball in their hands, and so the way that Tom Turnbull did the progression, it was right? the barrel game is you raced against. You're racing against an opponent, an opponent trying to juggle the ball into a garbage can or a barrel, right? Some type of vessel. And what this does is it helps players be able to take the ball out of the air and move towards a target. This also helps with dribbling at speed. Uh, this helps with improving their their vision and their awareness. So when Tom Turnbull taught it, the progression that players competed against, it'd be right foot with a bounce left foot with a bounce, both feet alternating with a bounce, right thigh with a bounce, left thigh with a bounce, right with or without a bounce, then right thigh, left thigh alternating together, and then finishing with any part of the body you want, with or without a bounce. When I taught it, right, when I taught it to a middle school team, I had so many kids that I couldn't, I couldn't do the, I couldn't do the, I couldn't just have them race against each other. I had to put all 20 plus kids, all 20 plus kids had to juggle towards the same barrel, right? Because it was just it was just time economy, training economy. I didn't have the resources, right? I didn't have enough garbage cans. I didn't have enough um, balls to go around for each player. So I had to make do with best I, the best that I could. So, right on here, I'll show you the progression, how it looks. Right, so this is the third game, this is the third exercise in the process, right? It's, it's, it's ball mastery, ball mastery, dribbling sequences, then barrel game. So this should be, right, 45 minutes, 45 minutes, 45 minutes into a one hour practice, oh, I'm sorry, half an hour into a practice, this is what it looks like. Right, so you have a pair of stars in their hands. You could, Tom Turner will talk with the feet, but I think the thighs, depending on what age group your players are, the thighs have our large surface area and there's very low distance from right from your hands to your thighs so if they start very close to the barrel it makes it so that um, it makes it easy for them to succeed right you want to make skills easy you want to make strength hard so if you want to teach your skills right they could be let's say you have few right uh, it's, i don't know what age group you're, you're coaching but or if you want to have them start close to the barrel so that they can, they can succeed, right? So even if they're here, even if it takes them, right? If they're very low in skills, so you have to make it easy for them. But even if they're one or two feet away from, away from the barrel, two doubles in, one, two, and in. And so 
so and that's the demonstration, right? So then it's left foot with a bounce or left left thigh with a bounce, right thigh bounce, both thighs alternating, right? So right and left and right and in. So you get the idea. They're just competing. They're just racing against each other. And why this game is is effective and and fun is because players of different skills and abilities can still compete against each other and have a lot of fun. Right? You have a player who's better the best they you can have them start from further away and you could have a player who's more amateur start closer so oh. so it's almost Sorry, like I thought you were to be Sorry, it's almost like it's almost like in golf when some players play from the blues some players play from the whites the reds right you have players of different skills and abilities still be able to compete and still grow their game without limiting each other's growth if you think about dribbling sequences, dribbling sequence, this is the second, right? This is the second step you do. So, so Tom Turner taught these dribbling sequences and these are super powerful because they're rhythmic patterns. They help players not think about dribbling. And as their dribbling abilities improve, their awareness improves, their passing improves because now they can see the field, right? They have a, they have a framework of, um, A lot of a lot of coaches will, I think, put maybe spend more time passing, or, or, or way way passing drills over dribbling drills. But I think that's I think if you if you focus on dribbling drills first, then passing will come later. Okay, so this is the dribbling sequence. Dribbling sequence goes. This is the, the Tom Turnbull dribbling sequence. It goes outside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Repeat that over and over and over, right? One more time. Outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. As you um as you're doing it, you want to say it out loud and you want to tell your players to say it out loud when when you say it out loud. And the reason why you want to say it out loud is because it helps players internalize but it develops mind body connection. And it's 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 a rhythmic pattern, right? So, so so it's a rhythmic pattern. So it helps them not think about dribbling. And if you want to, and and so okay. So when I taught middle school, I would have the players. I would have them do, have them dribble two, two times around the field, saying the sequence out loud. So you you hear from a distance all the whole every single player going outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Right, two laps, and that was done. And now for ball mastery, right? So for ball mastery, there's something called covert coaching. It's the, there's a covert coaching app. It's C O. Covert coaching. C O E R V E R. He's got YouTube videos. He's got an app to download that has some free, some free demonstration. But so 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 the progression that Tom would use is one practice you learn a ball mastery move. And the ball mastery move could be as simple as, as, you know, pull left, pull right, right? So it's pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push. Or another move could be chop. They could say chop, chop, and chop the ball. So each practice you learn one move and then the next practice, you remove the, you review the move from previous, and then you learn a new move, right? So it's a, it's a progression. So you, you could say by the end of the season, right? You have ten to fifteen practices, twenty practices, forty practices. Each practice you learn one of them. So by the end, you say, okay, everyone show me the chop. Or you say, okay, everyone show me the scissor. Everyone show me the snake. So, and then so it's, it's kind of fun. It's fun memory recall. And if they're paying attention, then they should be able to remember the moves from right from day one so um, and that's it right so you, you can look up any any fun warm-up my favorite warm-up is um is Edo portal locomotion but you could search um actually Thai uh, Muay Thai it's got some good body weight warm-ups right so you, you do a nice body weight warm-up and then you're right into ball mastery then it's dribbling sequences then you go right into barrel game then you finish with 1v1 right so so this is a skills and drills style practice session that really emphasizes player development 
but it's, it'll lead right into team development because if your players don't have the fundamentals and you try to coach them like a, a team, I think that's the, the thing that most coaches don't understand. It's that if they haven't developed the fundamental skills, you gotta treat it as a, as a skills and drill session because to rush player development when they haven't even learned, if they can't even juggle and dribble, if they can't juggle to 10, if, and no one on the team can juggle to 10, and the ball comes to them and they have literally, they have no dribbling abilities at all, then that's when you know that you gotta start to run this style of practice because then you'll just waste your own time and you'll waste it, you'll, you'll kind of, um, they won't progress Right then, they they'll grow, they might grow, but not as fast as they would if you focus on the fundamentals, right? And maybe the sacrifices that maybe the sacrifices that you might you might not win as many games, but I think over the season the kids are gonna have more fun and they're gonna be better by the end of the season instead of you know maybe two or three more games won if you if if uh, if the whole if the, all your practices are like. not focused on their growth. So, and then once they, once they can start to master, right, once they, if you have, or, okay, so let's say your team, your, your team does have, your team does have the fundamentals. If they do have the fundamentals, well, you know, I'm gonna hold off, I'm gonna hold off because you just said that you, you want to teach the fundamentals. So I'm guessing they're, they're young, they're young team. And this is gonna work. You know, I've done the session with, um, high school players, I've done it with middle school players, I did it myself when I was between the ages of, uh, you know, six and ten, so this can be really, this can be really fun. I do this every single practice with my, with my middle school team, um, and even with college, you know, even with college players, you have any player juggle a ball of any size from any distance into a barrel, and, and then you add a, a, a competition style, right, you have them compete against each other, and you change the size of the ball, you know, can really, this is, this is not a, um, it may seem, um, this can help players of any skill level, right? Because it's, it's, um, you could make it harder for more advanced players and you can make it easy for easier players. So uh, hopefully this helps reach out with any questions. All right.